if you would be so kind as to open your Bibles to the book of St. Luke. The book of St. Luke. The 23rd chapter. St. Luke 23. Y'all going to follow along. <laughs> I'm going to read this out of this Passion Translation. So it's going to sound a little different from what you're looking at. But just try to follow along as best as you can. Luke 23. We're going to pick it up at the 27th verse. Luke 23. Jesus. 20. And I'm reading from the Passion Translation, so try to follow along as best as you can. Massive crowds gathered to follow Jesus, including a number of women who were welling with sorrow over him. Jesus turned to them and said, daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. You should be weeping for yourselves and your children, for the day is coming when it will not be the women with children who are for the day is coming when it will be not the women with children who are blessed, but the childish. Then you will say the barren women are the most fortunate, those who have never given birth and never nursed a child. They are more fortunate than we are, for they will never see their children put to death. And the people cry out for the mountains and hills to fall on top of them and hide them from all that is to come, for it, for it, if this is what they do to the living branch, what will they do with the dead ones? Two criminals were laid away with Jesus, and all three were to be executed together. When they came to the place known as the skull, the guards crucified Jesus, nailing him on the center cross between two criminals. While they were nailing Jesus to the cross, he prayed over and over. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for blessing us. We thank you for keeping us. We thank you for watching over us. We thank you for protecting us. Right now, Father God, we ask you, if there's anything unlike you in our lives, expose it, reveal it, and remove it. Forgive us for any sin of omission, commission, or poor disposition. Now, God, we ask you to open our eyes that we behold the wondrous things within your law. Open our ears so that we can hear what the Spirit of God is saying. Open our hearts so that the seed of the word that comes forth today finds good ground, takes root, grows, and brings about fruit at the appropriate time in our lives. Now, hide me behind the cross. Speak to these lips of clay. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. 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 So I'm gonna give you this. I'm gonna give you the overall theme in a second. But um, I want to talk about the passage and what's going on with the passage that we just read. So if you're familiar with the scripture, we understand that Jesus was taken into custody and Jesus was tried and found guilty for a whole bunch of crimes that he did not commit. Um, there was a lot going on in the passage. We see that um, there was a crowd of people, even after being found guilty, there was a crowd of people that were still following Jesus. There were people that were wailing behind them. There were people going all the way up to Calvary, Golgotha, the place of the skull, to see Jesus crucified. And I'm sure all of them weren't there because they were sad to see Jesus go. I'm pretty sure some were celebrating because Jesus was messing up their flow. He was messing up their money. He was messing up their he was messing up their businesses for people who dealt in certain um institutions that would be deemed unclean and unholy. Jesus was coming against that, so they were probably glad to see him go, you troublemaker. Um, there was probably some others that were like, well, you know, we saw you raise Lazarus from the dead, and we saw you turn water into wine, and we saw blind people get healed. Let's see you get out of this. Well, you know, the naysayers. Let's see if you can get out of this one, Jesus. But we understand that there was a crowd. There was a following of people as they were taking Jesus to be crucified. Y'all with me so far? Yes. Um, 
we see that Jesus, once they got him up on the cross between, between the two thieves, he even asked, in spite of all that was going on, he took other people into consideration and um, he said, Father, forgive them. All of these things happened that we're talking about. And all the things happened with an audience of people who both loved and hated Jesus. Jesus was well known. Amen? Amen. Jesus was well known. Amen? Amen? People gathered to witness this death as they had assembled many times to observe everything else he did. So we could argue, and I can show you in the scripture that in his day, Je Jesus was famous. Yeah. Okay? Sure. And that's what I want to talk with y'all about today. I want to talk with y'all about how to live with fame. Mm. I want to talk about how to live with fame. Okay. Y'all ready? Yes. No, 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 you're not. <laughs> but it's okay. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> How to live with fame. Everybody wants to be famous. Everybody wants to be known. I know we say that, but the reality is, is when you do something nice, you like to be acknowledged. Right. You like for someone to say, hey, good job. Well done. But there is a criteria to live with F A. And All right, it, come on now. how to live with fame. So, so first we're going to talk, but um, what is fame? So fame can be defined as widespread reputation, especially in a favorable character. Right now, I love it when I get these opportunities, so I'm going to go ahead and take it. Right now, boy, them eagles show his yeah. famous. <laughs> right now, their reputation is something else. Uh -huh. They're just famous for being underdogs. They're famous for sticking in there when everyone counted them out. But right now, the world, they're on a stage. Yep. Being recognized for what nobody thinks they could do. That's just a great example to kind of get you an idea of famous. Barack Obama ain't the president no more. Famous. Yep. Famous. Can't, 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 get, can't, can't, can't not see him. Right. Everywhere he go, they always in his face. So... That's what fame is. But there's a certain criteria that we must, that's the natural application, actually, I should say, of what fame is. But there's a certain criteria that needs to be adhered to if you want to live with fame. And we all need to want to live with fame. I'm going to show you in a second. All right, okay. Let's talk about Jesus and his fame real quick. Examples throughout the Bible. I, I don't even, I'm not even going to go to the scriptures I've got. I could just run them down through my head. Um, there's a, there's, a, there's a moment in the Bible that we're all familiar with, with um, Jesus was preaching on the shore, and there were so many people that he had to get on the boat and launch out so, and, so that he could speak to the people, and the, being out on the water actually acted as his pulpit, and the people were on the shore, and he was talking to them. There's another story, the woman with the issue of the blood, the story says that Jesus was in the crowd, and the crowd was so immense that they were throwing him back and forth. They were following him. He was famous they were just rushing and the woman had to fight through the crowd to touch the hem of his garment so that she could be healed there's everybody knows the story about how jesus fed the multitude with the two fish and the five loaves. a multitude is a crowd they were following jesus they were listening to jesus and they were hanging on his every word there were naysayers there trying to challenge jesus and his doctrine jesus was famous jesus was famous and he wasn't, and, and what made him famous was he stayed true to who he was. He didn't do anything out of the ordinary. He didn't do anything extraordinary. All he did was stay true to who he was. The irony of it is he was the king of kings and the lord of lords in the body of man. But he was famous. The world, he was world renowned at his time and in his area. And I know there had to always be some type of hype when Jesus came to town. There had to be some type of hype. There had to be some type of hype. There had to be some type of hype. There is the one passage in Mark Mark chapter 2, verse 21, and it said, no, Mark chapter 2, verse 1 and 2. Mark chapter 2, verse 1 and 2. It says, and again, he entered into Capernaum after some days. I love how it says it. And it was noised. That he was in the house. It was noise that he was in the house. Listen, listen. This passage is so crazy to show you how popular and how famous Jesus was in his era. I gotta establish his fame because I, if, if we if we fast forward to the end of the story, his fame didn't stop him from being persecuted. 
but I want you to understand that he was fame. And, and that's a part of the burden that comes along with fame. The haters going to know where you at all the time. But it says he was, it was noise that he was in the house. And then verse 2 says, and straightway, that means instantaneously, straightway, many were gathered together. As soon as they heard Jesus was at that house, everybody got to where Jesus was at. I mean, some came for the teaching, some came for the miracles, some came to um, see what what is this Jesus stuff all about. I got to go see it, see it for myself, and I, I, I'm pretty sure some people just what if, if it was today, people would have been up there trying to get selfies and, and 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 go live with Jesus. You know, they would be doing all that if it was today. But because you know, you know, that, that, it's human nature. That's how we do. It. Oh, look, a car accident. Hey, this is a great thing to make a movie of. Oh, look, they're fighting in front of the store. Hey. Let's go. Well, star, world star. You know, <laughs> I, I gotta say it like that so the kids don't think I really watch it. World star, well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, but you get the, but, 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 but you get the point. I can imagine this was like people be announcing it. It's the Jesus tour. Jesus of Galilee, three days and two nights only. You don't want to miss it. Jesus was famous. Jesus was famous, but his fame didn't change him. Right, right, Watch this. His fame didn't change him. We got, we got to learn how to live with fame. His fame didn't change him, but it changed how people perceived him. Um, in the book of John, the first chapter, the 26th verse, it reads, well, Nathaniel asked this question. He said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Because that's where Jesus came from. Watch this. This is, this is, this is just for the... This is just for the Titans. This ain't for all y'all. This is just for the Titans. Lazarus was the hood. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's why this is for the Titans. This is Lazarus was, was, was the hood. Lazarus was the ghetto yes. in the Bible day. Yes. Uh -huh. um, they probably talked a little different in Nazareth. <laughs> kind of like we talk a little different right. under the air. Right, right. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Not, 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 nothing good. What, what, can anything good come out of Kensington? Well, it, 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 it depends on what your definition of good is. Because from the outsider looking in, the only thing good can come... Oh, I'm, can, I, can I talk real for a half a second? The only thing that good can come out of um, um, Kensington is a good heroin. Alright? Yeah, that's... How you doing? <laughs> we got visitors here today, but that's we, we gonna keep up. When people look at Kensington, the you, you're, you come to Kensington for for certain things. People will come into Nazareth to find someone to put a hit on somebody. People will come into Nazareth to you know <laughs> you know for that. Nazareth was there was nothing good, but here comes this Jesus. Here comes this Jesus laying hands on people. Miracles happen. Dead people rising up. Blind people getting sight. Hungry people getting food. This, how could something like this come from a place like that? How could someone like this be associated like that? But Jesus and his fame and notoriety changed the narrative of, I keep wanting to say Kensington, changed the narrative of Nazareth. So instead of it being, can anything good come out of Nazareth, it became, here comes Jesus of Nazareth, the healer. Here comes Jesus of Nazareth, the teacher. Here comes Jesus of Nazareth, the Messiah. You got to understand that with fame comes a responsibility to be true. He did not allow Nazareth to change him, but he changed the whole narrative of the place he was from. That's how fame works. But you got to know how to live with fame. You got to know how to live with fame. Best thing I can tell you is we need to follow the model that Christ followed for living with fame. So ask yourself, can I live with fame? F-A-M-E. If you want to live with fame, the first thing you got to do is you got to do what Jesus did. If I want to live with fame, I have to forfeit all my entitlements. Forfeit all my entitlements. I have to accept forfeiting all my entitlements. Philippians 2.5 says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who belonged in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, 
but made himself of no reputation. That's the forfeit. Made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even to the death of the cross. Jesus was king. Jesus was reigning in heaven. But for us, he forfeited everything he was entitled to as the son of God to perform his purpose. And because he did that, he became famous. But he had to live with forfeiting all his entitlements. Are you, can you live with that? Can you live with that? To fulfill your purpose, can you forfeit all your entitlements? Fame, F-A-M-E. Can I accept fame? Can I accept forfeiting all my entitlements? You got to learn how to live with fame. You got to learn how to live with fame. Romans 12 verse 1 goes on and tells us, and you know this scripture. Once I start saying it, I beseech, y'all know the rest. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies, living sacrifice, Holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Forfeit all my entitlements. I don't let if we could just get this as a as 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 I don't know, as, as a, a, a species. As a species. As a species. We're in such a messy place in the United States because we feel like our rights are constantly stepped upon and we're not being treated fairly. And it really doesn't matter what color or race or anything, where you're from or where you go. But in Christ, you have to be willing to say, you know what? They did it to Jesus. He forfeited all his, he didn't do anything wrong. So how much greater am I than him? I gotta forfeit that entitlement and trust that God will take care of me in the process. Present yourself a living sacrifice. Present yourself. Give up your right to be right so that God's righteousness can be in you. Give up your right to give your way and let God have his way. Let God have his way. What does God say you're entitled to? See, there's the key. You will never get what God says you're entitled to if you keep chasing after what this world is refusing to relinquish to you whether you're entitled to it or not. Amen. I've seen families go at a tooth and nail over inheritances because they felt like they were entitled to something. Okay, let me keep it moving. Let me keep it moving. Can you live with fame? Can you live with fame? Hmm. I forfeit all my entitlements. F-A-M-E. Can you live with Getting all meaningless excuses. F A M E. Forget all meaningless excuses because I want you to remember it. Can you live with. Stop making excuses. Stop shifting the blame. Stop making it someone else's fault. Can you take accountability for your actions? Galatians 5, 7. That's why I love the Bible. Y'all don't have to listen to me. Listen to God. Galatians 5, 7. Ye did run well. Who did hinder you that ye should not obey the truth? Who can stop any one of you from obeying the truth? Who? 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 Why, why, why would you stop yourself from obeying the truth? I didn't feel like it. It got on my nerves. I was angry. I was sad. I was... Forget all meaningless excuses. You gotta learn how to take accountability and take ownership of your failures. Nobody made you sin but you. If you you have to learn how to live with fame. Right, yeah. Right. Forget all meaningless excuses. Adam was like, hey, listen, listen, listen. You're not the first one to have a meaningless excuse. Can I just say that? We've been doing it since the beginning of time. Right. Adam and Eve. It was that woman that you gave me, Lord. <laughs> Meaningless excuse for that. No, but I told you not to eat the fruit. Why are you blaming it on her? You can't do that. It started 
from day one, the, the young witch ruler that Jesus had the interaction, he said, the young man said, Jesus, I have kept the law from my birth. I've done everything. Jesus said, one more thing I need you to do. He said, sell all that you own and follow me. He couldn't do it. He couldn't do it. And, I, and it doesn't give us, it, said, it just said he left away bitterly sorrowful. And, and, and it doesn't say exactly what happened, but the, he had a reason in his mind that he couldn't let go of that stuff. And he had an excuse. And, 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 I, and I played around with that as I was studying and preparing. I was like, man, what if he would have did it? Like, I was just thinking about this young, rich ruler. What if he would have sold everything? And I, 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 it, it's almost scary to think what God would have given him back in return for that sacrifice. But he had a meat. See, and, and this is where your excuse gets meaningless. It may mean a lot to you. It may mean a lot to you. Your friends, what they think about you. You know, your family, what they think about you. How um, the, the fame that you. It may mean a lot to you, but it don't mean nothing to God. In comparison to what you mean to him and what he sees in you, you got to remove those excuses are the blocks that are and the walls that are keeping you from getting what God really wants you to have. Eyes have not seen, nor have ears heard, nor has it entered into the hearts of men. What God has in store for all of us. Yes. And the only thing that's stopping us is those meaningless excuses. Oh, I'm tired. It's too cold. It's too hot. I'm sleepy. It's raining. It's, 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 my hangnail hurts. I mean, but think about, think, I, and, and I'm doing that because all those excuses are so meaningless. They're so meaningless. You gotta forget all those meaningless excuses. I said we're gonna follow the Jesus model. I know that there was a moment in Jesus' life, and, and I believe that everything in the Bible is captured for a specific reason, so that we can fall back on it today and look at it. But Jesus had a moment. He was in Gethsemane. And he was like, God, right, right. if this cup can be passed, take care of your son. You know? <laughs> Let me know. But, but, but in, before he ever finished the prayer, he said, but not, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. And it doesn't tell us. We don't get the details of what was going through Jesus' mind at his time. But I just got to believe that there were some meaningless excuses. But because of Jesus, who was Jesus was who he was, and because Jesus knew what the plan was, he was like, oh, why am I even tripping? You're going to lift me up in three days anyway. I've been telling the disciples this since day one. Why am I tripping? You already, I know it's going to hurt, but I'm going to get a new body when it's all said and done. Why am I tripping? These excuses, you have to understand that your excuses do not compare. They don't measure up to what God is trying to get to you. They don't measure up. They're meaningless. If I told you, if, 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 if you had $100, and I, I don't talk about money, but money's something that everybody can relate to, and I don't have the ladder, so don't even get excited. If I had $100 and, 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 and you knew that I would give you a million if you gave me a hundred, it would be easy right. for you to come up off it. It would be easy. Like, let's break bread. You know, but because you don't know what the return on investment is going to be, and God, you just got to trust him and believe that he's going to blow. That's why we make excuses. Man, my gas bill too high. I don't get paid for 10 more days. You want what now, God? You got to forget all meaningless excuses and put God in that place. But God, when you have a meaningless excuse, not my will, but your will be done. Not my will, but your will be done. Excuses, you may have heard this before. Excuses are the tools of the incompetent that build bridges to nowhere and monuments of nothingness. I want to, uh, they're the tools of the incompetent. Incompetent people use excuses. Think about that the next time you make one. I know, it's tough. <laughs> this is my life. In ministry and in our faith, and we, listen, this is, this is powerful because I want y'all to stop making excuses. Right. I want y'all to stop. What, what you do is what you do, but you should make no more excuses. No more excuses. Listen to this. Because in, in our life, in our world, in our kingdom, and everybody is familiar with this, at least the mature people are, the older people, we talk about speaking life. We talk about speaking life. So if all you ever speak are excuses, if all you ever do is say excuses, then you should not be surprised that your life is filled with monuments of nothingness 
and bridges that lead to nowhere. Because that's the only thing ex excuses can accomplish. Y'all mad? Y'all mad? <laughs> Y'all mad? Look, look, see, here's the deal. Watch this. Because I've made excuses. And I don't have nothing to show for all those excuses I've made in my life. And when I stop making excuses and, 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 and reach in the cabinet and put loop up the elbow grease and put my shoulder to the plow, whether it's snowing, whether it's raining, whether I feel good, whether I feel bad, whether they like me, whether they hate me, whether I've got enough money, whether they take it or eat, when I stop making excuses and I start looking for the way, it comes together. Yes. You will always have nothing if you always have excuses. You gotta learn how to live with fame. You gotta forget all meaningless excuses. That's what Jesus did. We getting there. <sighs> gotta learn how to live with fame. So then we got Jesus back on the cross. Jesus didn't let entitlement stop him. Jesus didn't let excuses stop him. And then on the cross, he gives us another example of living with fame. He said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Living with fame means I must accept forgiving all my enemies. F-A-M-E. I must forgive all my enemies. I don't have to get this. I don't, get, I don't, gotta, I don't gotta get all deep with this because you may forgive somebody that did you wrong and they don't care. They can give two hootin' nannies. What? Yeah, you know. You ate the last piece of cheesecake. That was my cheesecake. That was it. That, see, I'm big, I, I'm big, I'm big on people. I'm big on people. You, that was my cheesecake. You didn't put it on that. But you know what? It's only cheesecake. I'll forgive you. Do you know what we? You, do you know what happens? You know what happens with, with, with it? And I'm, I'm making this something silly. Cause cheesecake, you petty. That's like 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 like. But well, it's okay. <laughs> that, that, that really happens, doesn't it? You 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 all in your feelings over a piece of cheesecake? <laughs> this really happens, right? You petty. No, no, the, no the, the, the point isn't about the cheesecake. The point is you took something that didn't belong to you, right. and 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 um and that's not cool. But it's okay, I forgive you. Now they can try to make you feel bad and make you feel petty about their misstep, but that's not on you. You forgive them and you move forward. That's the importance of forgiving people. It's not about them. You're gonna forgive people. If you if you learn how to forgive all your enemies, you're gonna forgive people who didn't know they offended you. You're gonna forgive people who, who, who didn't know they wronged you, but you're also gonna enlighten some people that they hurt you. You're going to get some relationship back that was broken over something, over an offense that they didn't even know occurred. But you got to forgive all your enemies. Like Jesus, Jesus' entire assignment was for one purpose, to redeem humanity back to God. It was to provide a means by which sin could be forgiven, by which sin could be forgiven and right fellowship that was broken because of sin can now be restored between humanity and the Father. Jesus at this moment was on the cross to forgive all of God's enemies. That was the whole point. And that is why, watch this, and that is why Jesus fulfilling his purpose, being true to who he was, that's why he's famous today. Y'all get that? Jesus is famous because he knew how to live with fame. Jesus is famous because he knew how to live with fame. He forgot all of his entitlements. He knew how to live with that. He, 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 he gave up the, the petty excuses. He lived with that. He knew how to forgive all his enemies. And if I had to throw another one in there, we have to know how to faithfully avoid man's entrapments. Just like when the devil tempted Jesus. Uh, if we can do those four things, then you don't have to worry about being famous in man's eye. Right. Because you're going to be a kingdom all-star. Because God is going to say, 
that's my boy. And God is going to elevate you. If you can forgive your enemies, if you can heap coals on their head, if you can bless them that curse you, if you can pray for those who despitefully use you, God is going to use you mightily because that is the love of Jesus. While they've driven the nails into his hands and they've driven the hell nails into his feet and they spit on him and they are whipping him and they're talking about him. Save yourself, Messiah. And they're mocking him. Jesus is like, Father, forgive them. It said, he said it over and over and over again. Father, forgive them. They don't know. They don't know what they're doing. Father, forgive them. Could you imagine that? Just a, just a sidebar. Can you imagine that? No, 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 no. Can you imagine this? Somebody spitting on your child. Look at y'all. <laughs> this is why I make them leave their guns in the car. <laughs> Somebody spitting on your child. Somebody, somebody, somebody beating your child to the point where the Bible says that they couldn't even recognize Jesus' face because the night before they had beat him over the head with reeds so many times. Could you, and his mother was there. Could you imagine that? And, and then he's up there after they had done all this to him and they're still there. like, it's forgive him. Forgive him, forgive him, forgive him. And this is why I always tell you why Jesus was necessary. Because he set the standard. Yeah. There's, there's, there's no way we can be like, I just, I just can't let it go. Oh, well, really? But let's take a look at Jesus. You got you to gotta be able to forgive all your enemies. Well, I ain't Jesus. You need to forget those <laughs> meaningless excuses. Like, we know you're not Jesus. <laughs> but that all of it works together because I want to be and I want I'm talking about me I don't know what you want but I want fame I want kingdom fame fame is widespread reputation especially of a favorable character so when I get to the place that I plan on spending eternity and I walk through the pearly gates, I want to walk through there and I want the Apostle Paul and I want Peter and I want David and I want Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. All those brothers that I talk about Sunday after Sunday and I teach about Friday, I want them to say, here comes Stephen, the soul winner. Yeah, you can just see Stephen down in Kinsley. Remember what he said, can anything good come out of Kinsley? You sure show them what? That's the type of fame I want. But if I want fame that matters, fame that will last through eternity, then I gotta be willing to live with forgiving. I gotta learn to live with forfeiting. I have to learn to live with all of this fame today. I'm done. Some of y'all are old enough to remember this. The young people ain't gonna have a clue. But there's a song, this old TV song, and it was the and the words of the song. I ain't gonna sing the song, but the song said, "Fame, I'm gonna live forever." Oh, y'all gonna sing? I'm gonna learn how to fly high. I feel it coming together. People will see me and cry, "Fame, I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make it." Y'all don't know what it is. To heaven. That's right. Like, I'm going to make it to heaven. See, y'all think y'all forget. But, 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 and people, people remember my name and they'll remember my name because of the life I lived yes, sure. for God. Yes. The character I exhibited for God. That's how you live with things. Bill Cosby was famous. Look at him now. MC Hammer was famous. Look at him now. Oh OJ was famous. Look at him now. But there is a fame that cannot be tarnished, that cannot be blemished, that cannot be removed. And that fame is found in the Father. I pray that y'all were blessed.